Hey there, this is Mr. Leach, and today we're continuing our discussion about algebra tiles. This is the third video. We're going to be talking about solving linear equations with one unknown, so make sure you have your algebra tiles handy, and probably about four sheets of paper. I like to work each of these equations on their own sheet of paper. So I have 3x plus 7 equals 2x plus 11. One of the first things I want you to do is to see that equal right there in the middle of the the page, draw a line down the middle of this page. In general, when you're solving equations, especially when you're first learning to solve equations, this is a good tactic to know that if something is to move from this left side to the right side, we have to do so intentionally. If it moves from the right to the left, same thing, intentionally. We just have to, to we always have to undo whatever is being done. If it's adding, we have to subtract it. If it's multiplying, we have to divide it. So this is a good reminder. And physically, we want to keep the things on the left side of the equation, our algebra tiles, on the left. And the things that are physically on the right side of the equation, on the right side. So this line is going to be a help. So let's begin by modeling 3x plus 7 and 2x plus 11. So I have 3x plus 7. If this step is confusing, this setting up of this being 3x and this being 7, you need to watch my previous video where we talk about modeling these polynomials and 2x plus 11. I have 3x plus 7 and 2x plus 11. So I need to get my x's together and my numbers together. I like to move the x's around first. So I have a 3x over here and a 2x over here. You might have been told in an algebra class to move the smaller one. It's not wrong to move the bigger one, but it's helpful to move the smaller one. That ensures that the x's will be positive and we don't have to worry about dividing by a negative. So we're going to follow that same sage advice. So this 2x. Remember, you can do whatever you want to when solving equations as long as you do it to both sides. So I need this 2x to disappear. I can't just do this. Remember, I talked about how there's this line here. I can't just move things from one side to the other. So what I can do is I can add in a negative 2x. Well, remember, you can do whatever you want to when you're solving equations as long as you do it to both sides. So if I add a negative 2x to the right side, I have to add a negative 2x to the left side. That's what happens here. 2x minus 2x cancels to 0. And over here, this 2x and this minus 2x cancels to 0, leaving 1. Now, this is a very important step. A lot of my students sometimes think that when you're solving, you're just doing this minus 2x minus 2x that your teachers have taught you to do in the past. But they just tend to just be memorizing rules, not actually understanding that they are physically adding in a negative 2x to both sides. So we need to make sure that we're understanding that that's what's happening. Sometimes we might casually say, just move the 2x over. And by that, we mean subtract the 2x from both sides. So we have physically adding in a negative 2x, this this x pair cancels to 0, this x pair cancels to 0, this x pair cancels to 0, and this x pair cancels to 0. So let's write down what we have left. First, just the math that we wrote. We wrote a, we subtracted 2x from both sides. And so left over, we have right here, I have x plus 7 equals 0x, don't write the 0x, but I don't have any x's left, plus 11, so we'll just write 11. Okay, so now I have x plus 7 equals 11. So my x's are all on one side. I have one of them left. You should be breathing a sigh of relief going, whew, no division. So now let's take a look at this positive 7. So what can I do with this positive 7? 
Well, the same thing I did with that positive 2x. I can subtract it. So I'm going to, give me just a second, I'm going to put in negative 7 on both sides. So I've subtracted 7 from both sides. We can do that in the algebra notation with a minus 7 like that on both sides. So what happens here? Each of these pairs of numbers will cancel. It cancels to 0. And over here, these each of these negative 7s we're going to cancel away to 0. And what are we left with? 4. So we have 7. 11 minus 7 is 4. So I'm left with x, and this because this is 0, equals 4. I have nothing left to do to the x's, nothing left to do to the 4, so that's our final answer. x equals 4. Again, let's begin by drawing our line down the middle where that equal sign is. So we have to make sure that if, I'm, if something's going to change, I can't just move it over that line. I have to do some algebra. I have to add, subtract, multiply, or divide something. So let's begin by modeling 5x plus 2 and 3x minus 8. So here's my 5x plus 2 and my 3x minus 8. So remember we like to start with the x's, so let's get the x's together. I could move the 5x, but remember the sage advice is to move the smaller of the, t of the x's first. So how do I make a positive 3x go away? Well, we can subtract 3x. So I can subtract 3x from both sides. So I subtract the 3x from both sides. If we want to write the notation, we can. I tell my students, if you are going to write the notations, you have to fully commit to the notations. I have a lot of students who want to do this. They just write minus 3x because they know they're supposed to, and that goes away. But they don't write the minus 3x over here, and they forget to actually um, physically subtract the the 3x. That's a problem. So make sure that if you're going to do the notation, fully commit to it and write it on both sides. So this positive 3x and this negative 3x, they cancel to 0. And three of these ne these three negatives with these three of these positives, they will cancel to 0. And we have left behind a positive 2x. So let's write down what we have. Positive 2x plus 2 equals, that went to 0, minus 8. So if you're following along for the last problem, the last one was nice because we just had x. So we didn't have any division to do. So spoiler alert, we're going to have to do that in a second. But before we do that, we need to make sure this moves away. Because if I was to divide right now, I would have to divide this 2 there. I would have to separate this into 2 plus, sorry, x plus 1, x plus 1, and then have to do math past that. It's possible, it's legal, but it's not advisable. It's easier to make this plus 2, um, to make this plus 2 go away. So that way, we just have to um, divide one thing. So this is a plus 2. In order for it to go away, I can subtract 2 because the opposite of addition is subtraction. So I can subtract 2 from both sides. So let me make that note. Minus 2, a minus 2. These two constants cancel to 0. And Nothing cancels over here. These are already negative. This is negative. So that just joins together and adds up. And we now have 2x equals negative 10. So 2x equals negative 10. So I need this 2 to go away from the x. What is the 2 doing to the x? It's multiplying. How do I undo multiplication? Division. 
So what I need to do is I need to divide what I have. So how can I divide what I have into um, by 2? So, well, I have two x's. Just separate that into x and x. I have negative 10 over here. How, c how can I divide this into 2? Well, how about negative 5 and negative 5? So our notation, our algebraic notation, would be divide by 2 like that. So, if I'm dividing by 2, I just need to count what's in one set because I've divided by 2. What's left over in one set is just x equals negative 5. So I want you to pause and try this one on your own. So now all I've done so far is just set up our algebra tiles. So I have negative 3x plus 5 equals 8x minus 6. I need to move the x's. The advice, as always, is to move the smaller one first. Not required, but I don't want to have to mess with dividing by a negative. So I need this negative 3x to go away. I can make it go away by adding. So I can add 3x. If I add in this 3x, these will completely cancel out. I can't just do it to one side, I have to do it to both. So I add 3x to both sides. Okay, keep going. So at this point, I have 5 equals 11x minus 6. I need my constants to be on the same side. Since my x's are over here on the right, I'm going to move the constant that's on the right. It's a minus 6. If I add 6 to both sides, then the constant will go away. So add 6 to the right and add 6 to the left. Okay, keep going. So at this point, you should have 11 equals 11x. So this 11 needs to go away from the x. It is multiplying the x, so we need to divide. So if I have 11 and 11x, I need to divide everything by 11. So each of these get their own pile, and each of these get their own pile. So in the end, I have 11 things over here and 11 things over here. So I'm left with just 1 equals x. So when I divide by 11, I'm left with just 1 equals x. Okay, we have, I have one last question for you. This one's going to be a bit of a challenge. It's going to put together everything that we've done so far. So we're going to have some distribution to deal with. Okay, so I'm going to give you a chance to try this on your own first. See what you can do. So far I just have a 3x minus 4, that x plus 4, and that plus 1 that's out there by itself. It says I have two of these. So let's include these two of these now. So now I have two x plus 3 minus 4s. It says I have three of these, so um, here's my another x plus 4, and here's another x plus 4. Okay, I did not triple that one because that 3 is not multiplying by that 1. So I can simplify this by saying I have 6x minus 8 and 3x this is 12 plus 1, so 13. So continue from there. You should be able to finish it from there. Pause and try this with the 6x minus 8 equals 3x plus 13. I'll come back with the final answer in just a moment. Okay, now for the last step. All that I've done between where I left you off I subtracted 3x from both sides, so I put in a negative 3x on both sides. 
the 3x cancelled out, and 3 of the x's over here cancelled. Then I added 8 to both sides, so when I added 8 here, these 8's cancelled to 0, and then these 8's just added, giving me 21. So lastly, I have, I have this divide by 3 issue here, where it's 3 times x, so I need to divide the 3 away, so I can separate these easily into 3 groups there, and then I can have, if I have 7 items, 3 groups of 7 items, we'll be able to easily split that up, so 21 divided by 3 is that 7, so I'm left with x equals 7, and that's our final answer. So the only thing that's really tricky about this was just putting everything together that we've done with the multiplication by a constant and then solving from there. So I hope you've learned how to solve linear equations with one variable using algebra tiles.